Oh, shalom, aras tafari. Greetings. Ah, we live in interesting times, my brothers and sisters. Um, there's enough going on. You just missed a comet. A comet just passed very close to the earth. I guess most of y'all either saw our clip or saw another news clip about this comet that they said if it fell, it could have just wiped out the whole country. And if it hit into the ocean, it would have created such tsunami waves. So we live in very prophetic and um, an interesting times, my brothers and sisters. Um, let's speak on this uh, particular subject matter that's in the news. And they repeat these phrases. They're kind of like political um, Babylon's kind of mantras and everything. They say to us that um, this one or that one, first we heard about the, the banksters and the banks being too big to fail. Interesting. Now we hear about the European so-called economies and this whole, quote, debt crisis. You know, but if you really don't know who you're really in debt to, you see, this is, they said the cover-up is worse than the crime. Because who are they really in debt to? Brothers and sisters? They're in debt to I and I. They know they're in debt to I and I. However, we don't know that they're in debt to I and I. And which debt we're talking about? We're talking about the, the debt of, of slavery, the debt of uh, colonialism, the debt of white supremacy and, and all the other isms and schisms that are connected with that. That's what the debt's really about, my brothers and sisters. And in case you don't know it, just keep watching, keep watching, and hopefully you, you're praying and you know how to pray and you know to whom to pray to and through whom to pray to whom you must pray to. Because we live in very, very interesting time. But here's, here's this particular phrase. And people say, well, why are we focusing on, on this particular subject matter or the economics or the, or the debt crisis? Aren't these the real so-called subject matters? When we talk about the Bible, there's a lot of our people and other people who really don't see the connection. So they don't really see how it all comes together. And, and truthfully speaking, there's been a lot of false prophets and priests and teachers and so-called religionists out there, and they're still out there, and they're in the weeds that they have sown. So they've sown weeds into the field, and the field is the world. So there's a lot of weeds out there concerning Bible and, and prophecy, and when we make a statement such as, it's the debt crisis, the Babylonian economies are suffering debt because we're coming now to a, a new age and we're coming into a time when the accounts balance, the, the balances have to be made. The accounts have to be balanced. The, the tensions in, in, in the atmosphere have to be neutralized. But, but man, the so-called satellite of the earth, man, and, and humanity has been has been brought to a quote so called subhuman level when we compare it with the true potentiality of, of, of humanity. And that's because not just of white folks. We don't want to blame just white people because really we as the once lost but now found beta is Arael, we bear a, a crushing and an awesome responsibilities. Imperial Majesty speaks about this 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 ultimate challenge. And and he said that when um man's hopes and aspirations start to, to, to crumble all around him and, and he's searching and he's groping for answers, there's only one place to turn to for those answers. And that's the B I B L E, that's the Bible. And so let us also turn to the Bible for a moment. So as we say, grab your pen and your paper. Bring a willing and attentive mind. And let us open the words of the Holy Scripture, the Holy B-I-B-L-E, the Bible. And let us look at this. Okay, they say, too big to fail, right? Too big to fail. Interesting. Well, we say... Too big to fail, 
and they're too big to bail, too, to bail out. They're telling us right now what's going on with the, the Italian um, economy is the latest. Before it was the Greeks and the so-called austerity. We know what happened in the 2008, the so-called October surprise, before the election of the first so-called African-American or black president, President Barack Obama. We know what happened with the whole economic crisis and the mortgage and the, and Fannie Mae and, 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 and Bernie Madoff and this one and that one and the next sort of thing like that. And then we, we hear that the, the, the dream is becoming a nightmare. Now, the latest thing, as you already know, is the Wall Street protests. And we're touching on some of these issues because it, it's all connected very, very sublimely and beautifully. I mean, in a beautiful connection, the, the word of scripture and prophecy and what we're witnessing right now. But for many, we, we understand that for many, these events also are scary. The, the, these events are, are, are frightening because one's hopes and their aspirations and their dreams have, have, have been have been placed or really misplaced and now that we're coming into this this 2012 now that we're coming into this this dawning of a, of, of a new age a time of change we can say that truly Obama whether it was his word or just the, the word of the season we can say that in a sense he's fulfilled that part where he said that change however it was not the change that many people expected. In other words, the change, everybody had their view about this time of change. And we're still in these, these birth pangs. This is what we're witnessing, these birth pangs that are going on. Now, when they tell us that they're too big to fail, this means that whatever we got to do, we, why? Do we even ask, well, why are they too big to fail? Perhaps they, they should fail, but then they scare the people and they, and they fright the people and say, well, if they fail, what's going to happen to your life? What's going to happen to all of this? All of what, my brothers and sisters? Take a good look at the earth. Take a good look at the world. Take a good look at yourself. Take a good look at one another. Take a real good look. Take a stock of the situation. You know, there's that old song about a uh, Zion train is coming, and there's another old-time spiritual, I think, uh, Aretha Franklin, she sung it, and also Bob Marley, he did his ad adaptation to it. And this particular song, um, I think it says, Is There Hope? One of the verses that, that when I got to hear it and understand it really caught my attention. And this particular verse, I think is Zion Train. Some of y'all probably may know the right, um, the right name for this. The right name for this particular tune, but it goes a little something like this. It, they say, um, is there hope for the hopeless sinner who would hurt all mankind just to save his own? In other words, is there hope for what? The hopeless sinner who would hurt all mankind just to save his own. For profit, they would destroy creation just to turn a so-called profit. I mean, this is really scary. So we call this particular, we call this particular um, vlog right here. We call this Babylon, the Babylon economies, too big to fail. Too big to bail. Welcome to hell. In other words, welcome to hell. What do we mean by that? Well, like we said, let's turn to the scriptures for a moment. And there's a particular verse that we want to at least um, start out on in this particular free speech, freestyle, free speech. Because we, we have teachings, and there's some very specific teachings and, and principles that need to be learned in the scriptures and in the word, and especially in, in the true messianic or, or Christian 
God's way, as we know in this prophetic time of Christ and his kingly character. However, this is a, more of a free, a, a, a freestyle, a free speech. You know, we sometimes we we watching and we hear some news and we're like a, a little bit amazed. You know, um, like saying, saying, "Wow, oh, whoa! You see how that connects with that right there." I wanted to do my brothers and sisters to get that. And then I say, oh, Josh, should I, should I speak this word? And he says, this is what we're to do in this time, to preach, you understand, and to proclaim the truth. You understand? We're not going to always be likable, you know, and many of us seek to be likable, and that's the, we're not always going to be likable, but let's be interesting, you understand, and moreover, let's be truthful. Let's be factual and truthful. And these are very interesting times that we live in now. There's one particular scripture that says that that all of the 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 nations, you understand, know all of the nations that forget God are turned into hell. I don't know if you're familiar with that with that particular that particular scripture where it says that all of the nations that forget God are turned into hell. Now, this forgetting of, of, of God, how long has this been how long has this been going on, this particular forgetting of God? Well in well what's very interesting in modern times, there's that famous um newspaper cover. I believe the newspaper perhaps is um what they call the newspaper, either it's Time or something, or Newsweek, one of those newspapers that has that enigmatic cover. And that enigmatic cover, it says, it says, um, it, is God dead or God is dead? Or is, I think they ask the question, is God dead? And if you go back to the time of that particular newspaper cover, I believe it was sometime around, um, Sometime around the 70s, either either the late 60s or the early 70s, and that's about 40 years ago. So it's been roughly about 40 years ago. Now, when the word says to us that all nations that forget God are turned into hell, it says the well, it says the wicked. This is um we, we found it is it's Psalm Psalm nine chapter nine verse or Psalm nine actually and verse seventeen and it says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God the nations of the earth in this present time this 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 fall going into winter season. 2011, as we're approaching nearer and nearer to that 11, 11, 11. Some say that's significant. Some say that's prophetic. Some say that there are certain signs to look out for. And there's many that have shared their, their reasonings about that. So we're not going to regurgitate those matters, but one can hopefully check those things out while there's still time. So this particular psalm, let's go over this particular psalm, because this particular psalm is called um, Mutlabain. Mutlabain, and it's Psalm 9. Now, this is under the subject matter of the, the, the crash of the Babylonian economies and, and the debt prices. Now, we've already explained this and said that, listen, if they did what they promised to do with the so-called lost sheep of the Beta Israel, and we're speaking about the so-called black slaves, in the Americas and the Caribbeans with reparations and, and with true freedom, you understand, with a, with a true repentance about what, what was done. In fact, there's Skip Gates, Skip, Bill Ga Skip Gates, um, the black uh, historian, African-American historian. He has a new um, series on PBS. We caught an episode of it, I think, last night or the night before, the night before roughly, which was called... Um, looking for Lincoln. And what was interesting is that Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, basically was another typical another typical white man. 
almost like what Obama said about his his grandmother, a typical white person who had their fears and phobias, a lot of it institutionalized, so forth and so on. And yes, we saw the comment that one of y'all had put up there about something about two, only 2% two of white people. They said 2% of white people in America, only 2% of white people in America own slaves. And they try to say, well, there's more like 40% of the Jews in America had slaves and other to insinuate that it was with the Jews. We know that the European uh, yeah, yeah, we know that the European the European Jews concerning slavery and we've seen the video, it's a very good video, very prov provocative about who sold the slaves um to the Americas or in the Americas or the whole slavery and the slave trade, pointing out um, the crypto and, and certain Jews, European and, and Polish, German and Polish Jews who were involved in the economics and the facilitating, you know, just like the bankers. It, it was a profitable, um, it was a profitable business and, and they got into it and they, and they helped to facilitate the bringing of the true ethnic Hebrews or the, 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 the natural branches that were broken off of that olive tree prophetically bringing them to the Americas so we, we don't deny that because the facts are there I mean in some in some very provocative um, well-researched well-documented documentaries that show that the so-called European Jews had a, a, a big hand in the slave trade many of them like to downplay it but there's the evidence that's out there that they have not addressed as of yet so until they address that evidence and, and find a way around, you know, disproving the evidence that, that is there, um, such as the document, the Jewish onslaught, and the video that we point to who sold the slaves to the America. So we understand there was a Jewish, European, Eurocentric Jewish involvement in the slave trade. So that's that being recognized. But when some try to say that only 2% of white people own slave, well, What's very interesting is that 40% of white people and those who are descended consider themselves European or white people today in the Americas, that their ancestors was not even back in, the, in that time. So there's a whole other population since immigration in America, you know, with about 40 or so percent of today's white people, you understand, that are immigrants, first, second, third, whatever generation, immigrants. This is after the the real chattel slavery, after the the bulk of that 400 ish year period of time took place. They came to America, so let's not confuse the facts and try to you know water down the facts and say only two percent of white people own slave slaves in America. The fact is that America became the number one financial economic superpower in the world par excellence beyond beyond any other nation you understand even even catching up with its mother nation england and surpassing it is because of the lost sheep is because of black folks you understand so-called negroes or the hebrews who don't know themselves in the Americas. So when we say God bless America, let us recognize that blessing of America was the lost sheep. The the black people in America was that blessing of America. This is why even after Abraham Lincoln so called freed the slaves, quote unquote, he didn't free them, emancipate them. I mean and the documentary by Skip Gates looking for Lincoln is interesting. Looking for Lincoln is interesting because it does point out some of the facts that are getting wide circulation in the internet and the media, alternative media, is getting a lot of play. But we just wanted to sort of kind of address that a little bit because ones have said, well, oh, only there was only 2%. So, so on. we're not even talking really about these white people or white people today need to become better educated and need to recognize the fullness of the facts because if what's going on economically and and politically in this world is becoming shocking to many people it's because half of the story has not been told 
half of the story has been suppressed and, and facts have been twisted and distorted to give a false impression so when they could control the media and the knowledge and the awareness it seemed as though the world was 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 happy go lucky there was no problem everybody was getting along so forth and so on and and white supremacy or the the gentiles you see there's a video that we want to touch on concerning the end time plan ones of access well what is our end time plan agenda do we have an end time plan agenda well this is our end time plan agenda but but whose end times is it the bible says that is the end of the Gentile world dominion. So now as we study the scripture and put it into historical context, the Gentile world dominion comes down to us as the Anglo-European hegemony in the world. And this is what we're witnessing. We're witnessing now the financial and economic pangs because the economy, what kept the European economies on top, especially America, and their European partners was the dirty little secret, we can say, slavery. You understand? And the slavery of the lost sheep of the Beit Israel, of, of the black peoples in the Americas and the, and the Caribbean. This is what kept the European economies for more than 400 years on top. This is, this is one of the key things, one of the little understood and known facts that is just beginning to dawn on even many political scientists and, and students. Many of them, some of them watch these videos and have sought correspondence with I and I. Some of them have mentioned these things that they thought what we were saying was wow, was outrageous, couldn't be true, because if it was true, they would already have heard about it in their class. Where did I get these facts from? So forth and so on. And we told them to look it up. Just go and look it up on the Internet and recommended a couple of books and resources that had other information where they can verify it because, you know, while there's time, you know, you know before it's too late, find out what the truth is so it won't be so shocking what is to happen and what is to occur both in heaven and on this earth and mainly in the hearts and the minds of people. You understand? Because people's hearts and minds have been so traumatized and kept in the dark that when they're witnessing these heavenly signs and these earthly signs, it, it, like the Bible says, that people will faint because of the expectation of what is going to happen. And remember, we are still more than 12, about 13 months away from the so-called December 2012 date. You understand? The December 2012 date where they're expecting a whole uh, cosmic alignment. And, and the recent comment that we, that we prefaced and mentioned a little bit earlier it is just one of those signs because when people if you really think about it if that comment were to, to hit perhaps we wouldn't be having this discussion right now you understand perhaps this particular media that hopefully you'll be able to view this on wouldn't be up wouldn't be functioning you understand there was an earthquake as well in in, in Turkey recently and 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 this is these are just signs and more signs. But now we need to be sober about this because a lot of people are drunken or have been um, hoodwinked and bamboozled to, to, to believe a certain so-called interpretation. And we say, generally speaking, a whitewash and a Gentile Eurocentric misinterpretation of Bible prophecy from a Eurocentric perspective, but not from the, the true perspective of the scriptures. So this has many people expecting certain events in a particular order or a way that it is not going to happen, but they believe it's going to happen because their pastor told them, their preacher, their, their so-called religious authority, and they did not do due diligence. Just like the law says, ignorance of the law is no excuse. They didn't do due diligence. To, to study these things for themselves and to find out whether these things are so. Now, 
With all that being said, what do we mean when we say the Babylon economy is too big to fail? Says who? Too big to bail? Like the Bible says, we would have healed Babylon, but she would not. This system of things could have been healed. This, this very system of things, it did not have to get to this point. Neither does it really have to get to the point that it's going to get to based on the present trajectory of the global geopolitical world system and the, and the social system and the religious ignorance, the spiritual ignorance and, and the counterfeit antichrist out there that have already, you see people looking for the Antichrist, they had asking whether Obama's the Antichrist or whether this, this president or that president is the Antichrist. You should be asking whether your pastor or your preacher is the Antichrist. That's what you should be asking. Whether they are teaching what Christ says here or are giving you a certain product or byproduct that they don't even know, like Christ said, we know that which we worship. Ye know not what you worship. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of Moa, Anbesa, Zaim, and Negeda, Yehuda. Salvation is of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Salvation is of Kedemawi, Hylas, Selassie, the elect of God, the king of kings of Ethiopia. Like it or lump it, Christ and his kingly character. That's the half of the story that they did not compute or computate into the equation. This means that the cover-up is far worse than the crime. Now, Psalm 9, I think it kind of addresses the whole issue of too big to fail, too big to bail, welcome to hell. Because here it says, and begins off, to the chief musician upon Mutalabain. Now, Mutalabain has uh, in the Schofield Study Bible that we study here in the Society of His Imperial Majesty, in the line of Judah Society, it says Mut Labain, and it's interpreted as death of the sun. They say that this is not a musical instrument, but the title of the song. They say that there's a possible connection with 2 Samuel 12 and 20. Now, in our Tehillim, and I don't think we have the Tehillim the Tehillim out, out, out right now is probably in the, the next bait. And the Tehillim is, is, the, is the Jewish um, Psalms of David with, and has like footnotes, the synagogue Tehillim. Now we have our particular um, Psalm of David. This right here is the Psalm of David um, in Amharic in English. This is the Parallel Bible right here in Amharic in English. And you can order this, get a copy of this, and it has both the Amharic and English. And it's been annotated in many places and footnoted, so it has other reference materials. Um, this, we actually updated it. Our first, in many of the new books that we're seeking to publish, the, the initial is, this is the parallel, like we're coming off the New Testament. The Lions of Society's own publication of the New Testament of the King of Kings, the Royal Amharic text, as well as the English text. Now these, especially at the Psalm of David, I think is very, very important, especially in times like these. But let's get into the psalm. So the psalm is called Mutalabain. Very interesting and very enigmatic title. Now, here in our version of the psalms, you can see that footnote right there. That's a footnote that we had ascribed to our parallel Mizmur Dawit. And here we say Mutalabain, it literally means death to the sun. There is an old Jewish tradition that speculates that David composed this pian on the basis of the death of a neighboring ruler whose name was allegedly Labain. This is one particular speculation about the title of this particular psalm. He also was said to have oppressed Israel. This particular neighbor named Laban, according to one particular interpretation of the title of this particular psalm, Mut Laban, was an oppressor or downpressor of Israel, but there's no record of him in the entire biblical history. So that's an extra biblical 
um, assumption there. Now, others choose another interpretation, namely that by analogy, the name was a direction to the leader of the musicians. In other words, the, the subscription. In some Bibles, they take it out. And, and we say those Bibles are incorrect for doing that. In some Bibles, you'll see that after the, the psalm and the number, before verse 1, there's a little subscription. That subscription is very, very important. And it's, it's the key of really opening and understanding and overstanding the metaphysical application, interpretation, and application of the particular psalm. So what we do in, in our parallel Bible, Mesmur Dawit of the Psalms of David, is actually go into some of the detail and give some of the interpretations that have been suppressed and neglected from an Ethiopic perspective. So here it says that um, others choose another interpretation, namely that by analogy, this was a direction to the leader of musicians or that it was the name of a song whose melody was the accompaniment to the song. Now, an Osirian or Osarian tone is definitely implied. There's an Osar, part of the mystery, you understand? In the spiritual Egypt, we need to understand the, the, the mysteries, especially in connected, connection with the nation that forgetting God being turned into hell. You see, because hell is Sheol in the Hebrew, but Sheol is the Duat or the Amenta, and the Amenta was known according to the ancient, the mystery, the wisdom that Moses was learned in and adept in, the, the Amenta was the West. So when we interpret the psalm correctly concerning the wicked are turned into hell and all nations that forget that forget God, the true God, not the make-up, make-believe God, you understand, that they say bless them regardless if they do good or evil, just blesses them. No, 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 that's not how we learn in, in, in spirit and in truth. But an Osirian tone is definitely implied and thus must be of an ancient resonance that anticipates a Christological interpretation and foreshadowing of the Mashiach or the Messiah the Moshiach, the Hebrew Moshiach. In a biblical historic sense, 2 Samuel 12, verse 20, may best be read. So this is, this is a very, very important book because it's a part of the end-time plan. This particular book, the Mesmur Dawit, song, you understand, song and, and music. Song and music is a very important, the harmonics. We'll go into it in a little bit of more detail, yeah, willing. But let's just go to Second Samuel um, 12. Let's go to Second Samuel 12 and, and 20 and see what it says right here. This is how we study and show ourselves approved. Second Samuel um, 12 and 20. Uh, in Second Samuel, give us a moment. Okay, 12 and 20 says, Then David, David, arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself. He washed and did what? He anointed himself. He, he, he christened. He christened himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of yod heh wow -Hey, into the house of Yahweh, baruch -Hu, and he worshipped. Then he came to his own house and when he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. Now, this is con concerned with, with David's repentance, Second Samuel chapter 12, David's repentance, when it was found out what he had, what he had done, um, the uh, adultery that David committed, and, and the murder that David committed of Uriah or or Orio, Orion. David's David's um um servant had a had a wife, Bersabe or Bathsheba. Now there's a there's a there's a there's a mystery, a mystery that's even in that. And we just point out that um Uriah or Uriah or uh, Uriel in the Ethiopic is Orio 
Orio or Orion by extension, which is the particular constellation. So it's interesting if we interpret this from that particular perspective, since that definitely must have been known to the ancients, considering the context of the Bible, the context of, of Moses, that Egyptian and the mystery and ancient Ethiopia, we're getting once again to the very root of our half of the story that has been suppressed and little told. So this psalm begins and says, I will praise thee, Avertu, I father his father, with my whole heart, with my perfect heart, I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. Now, an interesting matter about most high as well, Leul, Bamarinya, also means the prince. Now, the prince usually is the son of a king, a prince. So when we say the most high in the English, we misunderstand the context of it because of the English. If we would now return to its Ethiopic and its Hebraic context, we will recognize that the word used for most high within the Ethiopic and even by reference in the Hebrew, El Elyon in the Hebrew, and Lul, Lul from La Eli being raised above, also means and is the title of the prince. So the prince really correctly is the most high. Now, within Aras Tefari revelation, this will signify Aras Tefari, the head of the Tiferet, the head of, of, of that beauty of God, because it's the king. You understand? The king, uh, behold the king in his beauty in a land that's very far off. Now, that is uh, Yeshayahu or Isaiah. So a little footnote there as well. It says, when mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. So we're moving into that time where the divine presence or the face of God is expected. This, this was what connects with the idea of the return of Christ. But more correctly, it's that presence of God, that parousia, that presence, which variously can be interpreted, but one of the, 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 the base interpretation is the face. The face was synonymous with the presence. This is what the ancients longed to see was the face, the face of God and the face of the Moshiach. Now by extension metaphysically that is the presence, the presence to behold the presence. But now the presence, it, it takes on a, a, a metaphysical, can take on a metaphysical context to it. Because we're living in a time where we can feel that there's a, a, a presence in this particular day and age that we didn't really perceive, at least. It may have been here, but we didn't perceive it previous there hither to. Now, it says, For thou hast maintained my right and my cause, thou sattest in the throne judging right, thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. Thou, O oh thou enemy, O oh thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. Their memorial. Now, we just witnessed the so-called 9-11 memorial, and we are continually bombarded with talk about the memorial to recent so-called wars, American wars, so forth and so on. Now, um, but Yahweh shall endure forever. The king of kings shall endure forever. See, some people will say to us that, oh, you're speaking about um, Rastafari. You're seeking to interpret Rastafari as that prince, as that most high. We say yes. But he, he's gone, and look, the, the Babylon still is going on. What they fail to understand is the way they interpret time is different. In fact, there's a new um, PBS um, documentary that's coming on. Um, I think it's coming on, um, I don't know if it's tonight or, or tomorrow night, but you can catch it on the Internet 
as well as on repeat. It's about time, how they have been interpreting time in a linear fashion. But what they are finding out is that it can also work in the opposite direction. You know, it's almost like the, the example of a, of, a, of a glass, a glass breaking and shattering, right? And people say that's the end. But it can also happen in reverse. So there's this whole idea of time that as we are moving closer and closer to that day and that age, science is seeming to understand that, you know, a lot of our theories were wrong. In other words, there's a lot, there's been a lot of kind of theories, and a lot of theories about science have, are, are being proven wrong. Why should we think it's any different concerning religion or interpretation or, or, or the racial identity of Christ? Why should we think that's any different in those fields and categories since they use one particular discipline to verify or so-called to vet another one? something that we need to um, consider there. But let us go on. So the idea of time needs to be considered because with the Almighty, we are still in this prophetic time. For us, we account this as the 81st. This is really the 81st year of the new age, if you understood. If you understand, this is the 81st, our meta bejwa or the bejnet, this age of redemption. We're in a redemption age. But it says, Yahweh shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne. His throne is prepared. Now we get to learn as we study scriptures that the throne of Jehovah, the throne of Yahweh, is actually the throne of David. So we see a further Davidic connection. And the only Davidic monarchy in the entire world is that Ethiopian Hebraic monarchy that is best represented by Haile Selassie the first, the last king of kings, the last emperor of Ethiopia. So that's just another, another very important footnote right there. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. Yahweh will be a refuge for the oppressed, for the downpressed. Ja Rastafari is a refuge for those who are downpressed a refuge in times of trouble. So when we're asked about the end times and we see this this, this alem, this this world, this hillem too, this dream. See the whole world is really a dream. If you all understood the etymological connections between alem, the alem and the word aleme. Aleme means to dream and then hillem, hillem or hillem is a dream. So this dream, as, as ones are waking up from this dream, you understand, the reality appears to those who have been so deeply sleeping in the dream, the reality appears to be a nightmare. And this, in a sense, now brings up their phobias or fears as we are in this hell, uh, this, 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 these nations that have forgotten the true God the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that is. Now, Yahweh, Jah, is that refuge for us. And the key right here in this psalm is that he is a refuge in times of trouble. But then we have to ask the question now, where is he? In other words, where is he? We must find he in we in and through Jesus Christos, in and through Jesus Christ, in and through his word and his teachings, and to not be conformed to the world, you understand, but to be transformed, to align ourselves with that word of God within us, and to find his spirit and his reality in us. Each of us has that responsibility individually. This is part of the end times plan. You know, because people are saying, well, they're looking at a physical place they can go for refuge. You know, saying instead of a spiritual place. You know, saying spiritual places are more real, permanent, and lasting than physical places. As we're seeing all these physical places shake, rattle, and roll, and be destroyed. 
Now, it goes on to say in verse 10, and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. This is significant. Now, we will assume that, well, everybody who said they worship God and that God is, there's only one God will know his name, but they don't. Most folks that you hear talk about God, just ask them, well, what is his name? And then, after the answer, if they answer that, ask them, well, what is his son's name? See, this will prove whether they know his name, because it's that those who have gnosis, Gnostic knowledge of his name, will put their trust in thee. For thou, Yahweh, Abed, Adonai, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. This is why he tells us to ask to seek, to knock, and this is to be interpreted spiritually or metaphysically. This is the work that we should be about, the meditation, that, that, that grounding of ourselves in the truth, that seeking of Yah, that seeking of Jah, because Yahai, Yahai, Jah live, children, yeah. See, and the children are those who are born again. So there are certain qualifications you understand? And these are expressed and outlined in his word. It says, sing praises to Yahweh, which dwelleth in the Sion, which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. So our job is to declare not just his doing in ancient times, but the fact that he still lives and his doings are being done even in our present time. And we're seeing some very, very powerful um portents or signs of that. We're not seeking these signs, but we're revealing that these are signs of what he has said. When he maketh inquisition for blood, when he inquires about the, the bloodshed of the innocents, have you ever stopped to think about all the innocent people whose blood have been shed on the earth? Now, if after Abel was murdered by his brother Cain or Cain, that first example of what they call fracticide that occurred. Now, after this happened, this was the first example, the template of brother on brother, or what we call black on black violence, the Cain and Abel. And we all know that black people tend to set a trend, even from ancient times what black people did, and we can see this even in this modern time, whether with tattoos or, or piercings or everyone into the big butt, you understand now, you know, now, now having a big butt or being, being, being full-bodied, you know, um, you know so, so we see that black people set this sort of a trend. We, we, if, you, if you don't get that yet, then you, you need, just need to, to seek that truth first. When he maketh inquisition for blood, what about the bloodshed of our ancestors? Where has the Inquisition been made for that? Yes, our, our Abraham. See, that's their Abraham. He's not our Abraham. Our Abraham is the black Abraham of the Met of Caduce of the Scriptures, but their Abraham, the counterfeit Abraham, did what? He was said to have freed the slaves, right? But where was the Inquisition for blood? There was no Inquisition for blood. Where was the the reparations. People say we shouldn't talk about reparations because it's a bad economy. We should talk about reparations. What, we have to wait for a good economy to talk about reparations? See, Negroes and lost sheep are still trying to heal Babylon. They have not recognized yet that Babylon cannot be healed because this disease is systemic. The system is the disease, and Scripture has told us this. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he, remem he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble, the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, Abertu, I father his father, O father of the house. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate I. Thou that lifteth me up from the gates of death. Thou that lifteth I and I up from the gates of death. And this is what the Stargate right now portends to open to. You understand? Know as we see it um, concurrently 
with the riders of the horses in the apocalypse, that connection right there, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Sion, the gates of who? The daughters of Sion, the daughter of Zion, not the daughter of Babylon. I will rejoice in thy salvation. Salvation is Yeshua. Yeshua. If you study the Hebrew, the word for salvation is the very same word, the root word for Yehoshua or Yeshua. You understand? So I will rejoice in Yeshua. You understand? In that which overcomes both hell, death, destruction, and the grave, my brothers and sisters. The heathen, now here's what, here's, what, here's what we're coming close to, that the heathen are what? The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. This is the whole connection with this, these economics in this particular time. The heathen, the heathen are the goyim, the goyim, and he breakly the goyim. And, and a goy is, is, is a Gentile, a goy, like guy. This is why they use goy. How, how you doing, goy? What's up, Goy? Goy, a Goy, that's what we say, I and I, Rastafari, when they say, they call us Guy. I and I is not a guy. You understand? I and I not men. I and I is man. You understand? Man in the image and, and seek to conform and transform ourselves from the old man that we were into that new man, that new black man, even. This is what, we're, this is what even Obama, in a sense, is a a sign of even in the in the mundane world he's a sign of that transformation of that new man you know and, and some of the potential of that new man not that he is the fullness of that but he is a powerful sign of it not that we stop there but we recognize that if this is possible from that background and that origin then by Jah, by God, much more is possible, and I and I shall overcome. So it says the heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made in the net which they hid. They hid a net. Is their own foot taken? This is why this economic crisis just gets worse and worse and worse, this debt crisis, and nobody mentions that Wall Street and the whole stock market began with slavery. That has to be taken into serious account. If there's a just God, if there's a righteous God, we cannot not deal with that. You see what I'm saying? If there's a just God and a righteous God, that must come into account. Mene mene tekel ufarisen. That must come into account. Yahweh is known by the judgment which he executeth. So as we've seen the signs that are going on, we can tell that this is the fulfillment. You understand? We've seen partial fulfillment of the one who is doing it. The one who is doing it. This is how we know it's not just what's just happening nowadays because it's happening. No. It is judgment. The wicked is sneered in the work of his own hands. He gay on. Selah. The wicked is sneered in the work of his own hands. What have the hands of the wicked done? Let's just look at the history of the past 100 years. Let's look at the past 200, 300, 400. Let's look at the past 400 years. Was that righteous or was that gross wickedness? See, now, if you're a Christian, a real Christian, you know, a true Christian who says that I love Christ and, 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 and what Christ says is, is, is the truth and, and I'm conforming myself to Christ's word and his way. And now look at the past 400 years and look at the experience of my people and tell me, was that righteousness or was that wickedness? You see, and if you are even somewhat conscious, honest, and sentient, and have said, yes, much of that has been gross wickedness. There's been a few incidental good things, of course, but overall the intent, the work of the wicked, you understand, the work of the wicked is snaring them. 
It says, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Now, I find Psalm 9 and, and 17 to be very, very interesting here, because it's giving us a taste of 2012. With, with, we're beginning to see these first signs. Too big to fail? Well, it's too big to bail. Welcome to hell. You understand? Welcome to hell. They are on a course because it's a time of judgment. And, and, and this is just pre-2012. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The needy. The needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. You understand? The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. And true Africa, Hebrew Africa, shall rise. Africa shall rise. You understand? Africa shall rise. Arise, Abitu, I father his father, O father of the house. Let not man prevail. Let not man, in other words, the way man, this particular man that's being outlined, the old thou enemy, destructive man, you know what I'm saying? Perishing man, false man, wicked man, you know what I'm saying? Will not prevail. Which man will prevail? Behold, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Moa Andesa Zaima Negeda Yehuda. Mark the perfect man. The fulfillment or the quote end of that man is Salam. The end of that man is peace. The fullness of that man is peace. But this man, you understand? This mankind cannot and will not prevail. And, and, and we're, we're continually being bombarded by signs and more signs. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, I there too. I father his father, father of the house, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. That the nations may know themselves to be just men. They're just mankind, but they have thought themselves presumptuously to be God. You understand? To even counterfeit the very image of the sun in a blonde hair, blue eyed, false counterfeit image. They're not God. They're just men. You understand? And, and the fruit, judge the tree by its fruit, my brothers and sisters. Judge the tree by the truth. So more to come. Shalom. Rastafari.